Hello and welcome to another Life and Death 2 tutorial video. This time around we are doing a brain aneurysm, um, which is probably the most difficult of the three operations, I would say. I was going to do the brain tumor operation first, but um, that one kept fucking up. Um, so I'm doing this one first. Hopefully it'll work out. This game has a lot of bugs which sometimes prevent you from making it through the surgery, but whatever. So the first thing to note, we've got some more equipment over here. First thing you might notice is the new array of drill bits. Here you've got the saw bit, which is used for sawing through the skull and removing a skull flap to access the brain. You've got the um, grinder bit here, which is used for grinding away the rough bone edges after sawing and also grinding down the sphenoid ridge. I'm not sure what a sphenoid ridge is, but we have to get rid of it. And then you've got your pinhole drill bit, which is used for drilling the holes. That will be used later to suture the skull flap back into place along with our usual burr hole driller. We've also got this guy right here is the dissector. You use that after drilling burr holes to separate the dura mater from the inside of the skull so you don't tear it when you're removing the skull flap. Um, this metal strip is used in conjunction with the um, pinhole driller um, so that you don't ac you put it underneath the drill bit so you don't accidentally drill into the soft tissues of the um, brain. And I think that's all the different things we have here. Um, oh yeah, we'll also be using the microscope for this one, and we have one extra piece of equipment here, the surgical gauze, which um, its use will become obvious later. So let's get started. This is an aneurysm on the left side. Sorry, we need to do soap, gloves on the left side, so we turn the patient's head that way and begin disinfecting with the iodine, like so. Put the drape in place, inject our antibiotics, blood in the IV, and we begin incising. There we go. So from here, it's uh, exactly the same as the uh, um, subdural hematoma up until you open up the scalp. So just make your incision, have your nurses yell at you for not placing the clips where they're supposed to go because this game requires inordinate precision with that sort of thing. Kind of missed the line there, but I think actually in this case the place where you're supposed to cut is actually a little bit below the drawn line on the right side. But anyway, take care of this. Do a little bit of this guy. Open the scalp as before. Of course, there's no uh, fracture there. Clean that off a bit. And now we need to drill four, bur four burr holes in the corners of the exposed skull area. So we use our irrigator as usual. Drill a burr hole there. Take care of that bone bleeder with the wax. And continue on to the upper corner. Do that. The left corner. <coughs> <coughs> Try not to cough while drilling. That's generally a bad idea. I'm surprised I didn't skid the drill there, which will end the operation immediately if you move the drill while it's drilling. And there we go. Now we dissect using the dissector. Use the right tip, and you'll see those change color a bit and they tell us all the burr holes are detected. Now we begin sawing. Just take the saw drill bit and saw in straight lines between these adjacent burr holes, like so, and just grab and remove the skull flap. You want to get irrigation on that, uh, bone wax for the bone bleeders, and now you need to cauterize the tissue bleeders on the inside. The bone bleeders will all be around the edge, as you might expect. If you don't cauterize all the tissue bleeders, the patient will eventually um, die of loss of blood. The active part of the um, cauterizer is the right tip, the little two double prongs that are very close to each other. Center that over the center of the bleeder, and you should be good. Are those bone bleeders? Did I miss those with the bone wax or maybe the cauterizer? I don't know. Okay, that should get them. Now... 
the grinder bit. <coughs> that little triangular rounded bit is the sphenoid ridge sticking in from the top, so ground, grind down the rough bone edges and also the sphenoid ridge in one operation. Like that, and we get a couple more bone bleeders. Take care of those with the bone wax. I think the top edge of the bone wax is the active part for that tool. Wipe those away, and now we're done with the blood for a bit. So I'll put saline there. And now we need to test to see if the brain is tight. It's relaxed, so that's fine. If it were tight, um, what you would have to do would be to open the spinal tap, click on the brain, it would then say relaxed, and close the spinal tap. The spinal tap just reduces intracranial pressure by removing a small amount of cerebrospinal fluid. So then I injected nitroprusside that induces hypotension, which is low blood pressure. You can see the blood pressure is plummeting. That's normal. While we're waiting for that to drop, we will drill our pinholes, use the... Um, Something is, oh shit, CO, PCO2 is high. Okay, so drill the holes near the centers of those skull flap edges and try to get the holes very close to the edge. If they're too far away from the edge, the suturing won't work and you'll basically be fucked. Come on. There we go. And make sure that the metal strip is underneath the um, tip of the drill bit. Otherwise, you'll drill into the patient's brain. Now we will place a few sutures, one in each hole. They'll just sort of rest there for now. And one in the center. Heart is in bradycardia. Turn that back down to low and inject atropine. <coughs> now we're back down to 50 over 30. I should also note when you inject nitroprusside, the urine level will drop slightly. That's normal. Now we put the blood in and it's almost empty at this point, so we'll put another bottle in. And now we begin incising the dura mater. Start from just to the left of your upper burr hole, and those are tissue bleeders, so we need to cauterize them. Cauterize these quickly, because they grow rather rapidly, and any uncauterized bleeders in the dura mater will later on cause the patient to die of blood loss. Continue on from where we left off. These bleeders won't grow as fast, or I think at all, but they can still make the patient die of blood loss, so make sure you cauterize them. It's a little hard to tell whether or not you have cauterized them or not because, uh, well, they were never growing in the first place. But anyway, just do your best with them. Now continue on with the cutting. Come on, you. There we go. Very important, by the way, do not connect your incision to the beginning at the top left there. If you do, you will cut off the section of the dura mater um, and kill the patient. You want to leave it connected. Cauterize those bleeders. Um, this is where the game often fucks up, I've found, when doing this bit. It didn't fuck up, so we're good. Okay. Put the gauze right there, that will keep the dura mater moist while it's open. And now we have the brain exposed. Remove your irrigator and go to the microscope. When you're in the microscope, um, you can not move or do anything while the irrigator is in place. Move it over a little bit to the left so you can expose, see this line here, that's the sylvian fissure. Um, I might want to explain a bit here, so I'm going to pause. The sylvian fissure is the... Um, basically the cleft in the brain. I believe it's between the parietal and the temporal lobes, so we're going to spread that open to access the interior portion of the brain. You must be very, very careful with that. If you open it up too wide, you'll um, damage the patient's brain and kill them. Also worth noting, if you can't see that, you might see like just a big gray mass here. That means that you haven't ground down enough of the sylvian fissure. In that case, you need to exit out of the microscope, put the dura mater flap back down, grab your grinding tool, and grind more thoroughly over where the sphenoid ridge was. Then put the flap back up and go back to your microscope. So once we've done that, the next step is to take the tweezers and use them on the sylvian fissure to raise, I believe it's we're cutting through the arachnoid membrane, which is the membrane immediately below, I don't know if it's the arachnoid membrane or the pia mater, there are two layers of the brain below the dura mater. Um, so, let's go along with that. We have to remove our irrigator. Make sure you keep placing the irrigator every once in a while. 
There are our scissors. Now take the micro scissors. Make sure that you are cutting only inside that little brown line. You don't have to cut all the way to the bottom. I'm actually not sure exactly how far you have to cut. It's sort of a mystery to me. But cut downwards and then also upwards. Be very careful you don't cut into the brain. This is always where I fuck things up. Okay, that should be good. You don't have to cut very far. Now you just remove those tweezers. Grab your attractors. Those are these guys. Put one on either side. At this point, you wanna, might want to move the microscope down a tad. Irrigate. And move that off to the side. Not very far. Just enough to expose those blood vessels. We need to cut those with the micro scissors. That will generate a bleeder there, which we need to cauterize. And we're good. I don't think we need the blood anymore. I'm going to put saline in there. Now we continue. We need to expose the aneurysm, which is this guy right here. Don't open up too much more than that. So first we'll go up. We need to cut through the um, this area here. With the micro scissors, just make a small incision about that long. You have to be very precise about that location, otherwise you'll cut through the carotid artery or the um, either the carotid or the um, optic nerve, which are down here. Move the microscope back down. Take your roton dissector. That's this guy. You need to remove the irrigator. Um, that's this guy. And click and drag from top to bottom along this, this. This is the bulb of the aneurysm, the body of the aneurysm. Once, twice. That's good. So now we've exposed the aneurysm and we need to remove those blood vessels blocking it. You use the roton hook for that. Just drag from top to bottom until it moves out of the way. Use the roton dissector now and just click once on the body of the aneurysm. It'll rise up a bit. Irrigation, because I'm paranoid about that. Now take the roton hook and sort of drag underneath that little cleft, and you'll see it rise up. Now you take this clip and put it over. Remove the irrigator, right. Oh, PCO2 is rising, and the IV is almost empty. OK, there we go. Crises averted. Anyway, aneurysm clip. Place it over the neck of the aneurysm, and we're good. We've successfully taken care of the aneurysm. Now we just need to close up. So remove those retractors. Get yourself out of there. And remove the gauze. And now we just close up. So take your sutures and suture around here. I don't know how tight those sutures need to be or how precisely on top of the incision they need to be. I just sort of put a whole fuck ton of them. Okay, so we got that. Now we put the skull flap back into place. Grab your pinhole drill bit. Oh, we can remove that. I don't know why you don't need the metal strip right here, but you don't. Just sort of drill there, and there, and there, and there, and one in the center. Now just with your hand, click on each one of those, and that will connect the two holes with the suture, and one there. Now we're ready to just close right on up. There we go. Come on, grab them. I will be supremely disappointed if the patient like dies of a arrhythmia that I didn't notice right now or something. Anyway. <clears throat> close up, close up, close up. And 10 sutures, staples. And we're done. In under 15 minutes, I managed to do that. Great job. A textbook aneurysm operation, if ever I've seen one. You've made it to the honor roll. Congratulations. And I'm almost at my time limit. Um, oh, wait. I'm not quite there yet. Not quite at 15 minutes. Anyway, we're done with the operation. That's it. I will see you guys next time.